please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, well, we have been talking about numbers. I just wanted to make one point on the markets before we got in. The markets clearly have are still bending under their own weight. Uh, the important point to note is that if somebody had bought the gap up uh, at 9.15, they are out of money now. The markets have receded from the opening uh, highs. We still can't call it a trending lower day, but clearly the first half an hour has not gone to the bulls. Uh, uh, anyone with a, a bullish position at 9.15 is probably out of money, and that is a bit of a niggling worry that the market uh, could not open above 10,600 and could not even hold anywhere close to that level and is now slipping towards the 10,550 mark. So that uh, is important to keep in mind. We will get our technical experts uh, in a bit. Yeah, the recovery <coughs> has become very feeble. We saw mm. it yesterday, we're seeing it today as well. But let's move on. Uh, Gujarat Alkali's had a good third quarter as gross margins improved uh, while higher caustic soda prices helped boost revenues. P.K. Gera, the MD of Gujarat Alkali's joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Gera, good morning. Uh, it's been a good quarter for you. Can you take us through what the expectation is? This time around, a uh, revenue growth of almost 30%. Is that something we can expect in the last quarter of the year as well? Well, good morning. Thank you for taking us on. And yes, our results have been very good. The third quarter particularly was excellent. The profit before tax increased by 154%. Profit after tax was 112% in this quarter. And our nine-month performance is much better than the previous entire year. Now, what is the future? That's what you're asking. Future is very difficult, but I don't see any bad performance in this last quarter as regards the prices are going. Mm. But there is a problem regarding water <coughs> because uh, the water in the Nabda River is not adequate and we are already facing the water shortages uh, to 20% already. I don't know what will happen in next two months. So because it's a water intensive industry. And we get water from GIDC and hopefully we are trying to manage it uh, with other resources as well. And uh, if things go bad, one can't rule out that. But uh, as regards prices, they're very good in the market still. And uh, But uh, what people see the prices is not a price for everyone. You see, if you have a long-term deals, prices are different. If you have a short-term, few trucks you are buying, that's a different price. So prices are very good, no doubt about it. That's why we did very well. This is not looking uh, all that uh, uh, good, uh, the way you're putting it, the water problem itself. I mean, it, the more human problem, considering that we are still in winter and we still have uh, four hot summer months uh, to tide before uh, the rains come on. Uh, but uh, Mr. Gera, uh, just some uh, uh, numbers in, in detail. What is the volume and price breakup uh, for Q3 and indeed for the nine months? Uh, the nine-month picture, Q, Q3 I gave you about uh, the, 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 the like sales volume has increased in Q3 as compared to the previous Q3 was about 29% and our profits are exceedingly well, very well, about 154% in PBT. EBITDA increase was almost 100% as money. We have those numbers, sir. We have those numbers. I just wanted to know yes. that the revenue came from volume and how much came from price. Okay, the, but the revenue came from two sources mainly. One is the price, as you know, which is uh, which is in, we have been uh, doing it well. But one more uh, source was yes, uh, production was about seven percent increase. But the GST has also gave us ten crores almost in this. Uh, we have benefited by the GST implementation. Oh. Okay, so this caustic soda prices, uh, you expect them to move higher or do you think they could stabilize around this range of say 35, 36,000? No, no, they are more than 40. Oh, it's more than Not 40 right now? Minutes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, so it all, that's what I'm saying, the deals are taking place on various factors, you know, the long-term relationship, the uh, the factors like uh, one, one year somebody wants to, do, it's a different price, six months. A deal is a different price, quarter deal is a different price, quarter deal is obviously higher than the six month. And you know, when I'm saying 40, that means a quarter cut deal. This this quarter deal, what you want to do, 40, 42 types. But if you are dealing, and then the quantum, what quantum are you going to buy from us? So it all depends on various factors. Is the sense, Mr. Gera, if, can it continue at these elevated levels and build on them, or may they peak off? 
I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the you. Price, you the, the price that you referred the price, to as. The, the, will the they peak off or can they even continue at these levels? No, no, no. Price is under pressure because okay. imports are now coming back in India. And uh, you can't, uh, China is exporting because their alumina industry, I was told, had to be shut down some of the uh, units. So the, uh, the, so the uh, costing became surplus there and which is finding way back to India. Oh, okay. So, so we can't definitely shake this uh, price will continue. Even if this uh, March till March, if it holds good, mm. we, we should be making good money. Okay, so this 28-29% margins are tough to maintain, you think? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, we, won't, we, do, we, we don't see a different difficulty till March. You see, in India also, like water scarcity in the western region is, is, a, is a phenomenon in summers. The rainfall was not adequate in, uh, in Madhya Pradesh side, so the water in the Navada Dam is not adequate enough, and the government is priority is on drinking water, obviously, to ensure that if there is any delay in monsoon or any kind of a problem they face, and the drinking water gets priority over everything. Yeah, and in fact, you're not the first corporate to speak about the problems as far as industrial water is concern, concerned or water for industrial yes. consumption. We have many uh, people in the past who've spoken to us about that. But I wanted to also ask you about this um, revenue growth in the export markets. You're sitting on a base of around 1,800 crores of revenue for nine months of the year. Um, yes. how, from here on, how much do you think it could grow and what chunk of it could come from exports? Uh, exports, we take an opportunistic deals normally in the market. In mainly in African market is where costed we sell. And uh, because domestic market is so good to ourselves, we only, our export turnover is about 250 crores. Okay. And uh, it's, not, it's, it's not very huge. Uh, the reason being our domestic market becoming so attractive. Okay. Uh, well, uh, finally, uh, I would assume that given the water shortage, there aren't any capex plans on the anvil? Uh, we are now very seriously considering putting up a uh, water desalination plant oh. so that we are free from this problem in long run. Okay. Uh, how would the work. economics work? I mean, how many years will it take for you to uh, uh, absorb that capex cost? No, no look, look, this is only a kind of an insurance against the, the water problem that we face in summers. Uh, the, the recovery is uh, more important is you know, serving our customers oh, right. so that we assure them that we are there for you. Oh, right. Well, that's a, an interesting experiment. We would look forward to how that works because that could be a solution for other people as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Gera, for joining us uh, with your uh, take on so many aspects of this industry. Well, uh, we shift to the other story this morning. Yes, the big story this morning, right? The Reserve <coughs> Bank will present its policy review later this afternoon. <coughs> the CNBC TV18 poll suggests that the RBI's Monetary Policy Committee will hold fire this time as well. Let's hear out what the top bankers are expecting. I don't expect any rate change, but uh, yes, rates will go up. Hmm. Uh, when the monetary policy rates go up, we don't know, but I think the... Uh, deposit and lending rates, uh, you are already seeing some increase in, uh, in the market rates already. I'm certainly not expecting a rate cut. Okay. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not expecting a rate hike either. I'm and it's very hard to predict when that will happen. Uh, there is an expectation that while inflation fears are there right now, mm -hmm. some of that could moderate uh, a couple of quarters from now. So uh, I'm sure RBI will be watching all of that. I don't expect a rate hike. There are factors for and against, the mm. U.S. interest rate going up, potential inflation, etc. But on the other hand, there is also a desire that the rates must be kept at a level which will, which will promote economic growth. Let's see how that plays out. Okay. So, I mean, if you listen to the bankers carefully, quite clearly they're not expecting perhaps the Reserve Bank to move now. But uh, there's a distinct feeling that uh, a rate hike or generally an increase in the cost of money is around the corner. Uh, that's obviously because of uh, not just crude prices, but uh, uh, the general global growth and the inflation pressures felt globally, the MSP structuring, uh, which of, about which we don't have details, and of course the fiscal deficit, the fiscal consolidation getting pushed out. So a general feeling that uh, you know a, a higher cost of money is around the corner. 
I don't know, if it is that fear that is haunting the uh, equity markets now, the higher cost of capital that is imminent. But clearly at this point in time, the Nifty is simply not able to hold the morning high. It's actually a trending lower day and it is the bear who is advantaged. It is the seller at 9.15 who is advantaged for the moment. I'm only speaking of traders, of course, not of investors. And uh, across the board, whichever index you pick, you can uh, look at the mid-cap index, you can look at the uh, Nifty Bank, the opening high has not held for any anyone and is the seller uh, in early morning trades who is advantaged. Well, with that, let's invite an expert voice. Uh, remember, today is the seventh of the month and it means it's the mutual fund day on CNBC TV 18. Joining in now to share in uh, the mutual fund day is uh, S. Nareen, EDN, CIO, ICI, Prudential AMC. Nareen, thank you very much, not only because you're joining us on the 7th, but because it's such a crucial day when people will need advice. Uh, my first question, how do you tack, uh, what is your comment on this uh, volatile 72 hours we saw? Is it going to leave a scar and keep the markets slightly subdued? Actually, we had a view that uh, we required a bit of volatility because people in the equity markets were forgetting the word risk. And uh, that uh, always leads to problems. So, you know, for us, this 72 hours of volatility makes people the worry about risk and therefore they look at products and uh, they look at also asset allocation uh, more broadly instead of thinking that uh, equities is the only asset class. So from our point of view, I would say that we are long-term investors managing other people's money. So for us, this bout of volatility is helpful in reducing the risk and return, expect uh, return expectations of the investors, which is reasonably positive. So I don't think we have... Uh, we are uh, any unhappy or something mm. like that. Yeah. Nareen, hi, good morning. When we met at that book launch a month back, uh, you had indicated that this is still a roaring bull market. Of course, a lot of things have changed since then. Uh, do you think this is only a correction in a bull market or are uh, things fundamentally changing? See, I think uh, as the person in f uh, before me was speaking, as you were speaking, Basically, we have to remember that in the last one year, uh, interest rates have gone up substantially uh, and almost by about 1% from the bottom, 10 years has gone up. And mm. at the same time, uh, equities has gone up substantially. So I think uh, there is a cost of equity angle and uh, that cost of equity angle is uh, likely to ensure that at this point of time, uh, the markets are in a situation where they would be more lukewarm than they were. Mm. And uh, when we met last time, I think we were in the roaring phase of the bull market. <laughs> and that always is a more worrying phase than a phase like today because we think today people will be more careful when they are investing. Okay. <clears throat> well, Nareen, just to uh, take that point forward, uh, you know, the budget uh, also imposes this tax on uh, dividend. Now, uh, are dividend funds likely to be structured differently? Uh, sorry, are uh, balanced funds likely to be structured differently? Uh, would they go, you know, more 51% into <coughs> debt? Uh, because you know that the tax there is, uh, uh, you know, 20% uh, with indexation or 10%. Is there any likelihood that more balanced funds will look like debt funds? See, actually, we have uh, products like monthly income plan, which are uh, debt funds. And uh, we have balance fund, which are categorized like equity funds from a taxation perspective. Uh, depending on what investors want, uh, they can choose to come into monthly income plans or into balance fund, depending on what taxation regime that they are looking at. And I believe that everyone who wanted dividend may actually, actually may not have, uh, all the people who are on dividend option may not actually have wanted dividends. So I believe that some of the people who don't need dividends may choose to go into growth option now also. So I think a number of decisions will be taken based but on the individual person's need. Some yeah. of them will go into monthly income plans, some of them will go into growth plans. No, no, my question was, of course, the investor will have to take the call on moving from dividend to growth fund. 
I'm asking you from a fund manager's point of view, post the budget and its taxes, uh, are your decisions as a manager of a balanced fund likely to change? Every product has a scheme information document and uh, in that scheme information document uh, it depends on what the equity weightage is and uh, you know we have to follow the exact regulations of the scheme information document and that's what we will do. Uh, as an asset management company we, we believe we are not only an equity mutual fund company, we are also a debt mutual fund company, we are also a hybrid mutual fund company. So I would say that we are likely to have all the products and investors are the people who are going to switch from one product to another. We are not likely to, I would say, change the characteristic of any product uh, away from the scheme information document and uh, that is how it will be. Oh. Uh, so let's uh, come back to talking about the domestic issues in the market. What have you made of the earnings season so far, Naren? Uh, you know, we, we have seen some good numbers come in from some consumption stories, autos, etc. But by and large, what's the sense you're getting? See, I think it has not uh, hurt in any way. Uh, do we expect, uh, clearly there is a base effect of one year back and that base effect, uh, clearly there were a number of companies which had done badly like two-wheelers, etc. So I would say that uh, the results have come up, whereas if you look at some of the industries like commercial vehicles, they have come out with superb numbers for the quarter. So I would say that uh, it is uh, in line with our expectations. Our expectations are that every quarter uh, uh, things will improve on the earnings front and that's how it is at this point of time. We have to remember that along with earnings improvement, you're also seeing interest rates go up and mm. uh, we would be happy to see a situation where earnings go up and interest rates don't go up because if interest rates keep going up at the same pace, the equity risk premium uh, is changing. So, you know, so from that point of view, I would say that what we in our mutual fund are hoping for is that interest rates stop going up and earnings go up, then I think the equity market can rally more. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Narena, let me come back to the mutual fund investor. Uh, this uh, 16 to 20,000 crores, that was the monthly run rate of inflows. Uh, is there any danger to it after the budget? See, basically, I believe that uh, a small part of it was uh, built on the fact that equity never gives negative returns at any point of time. This was uh, some of the views of some of the investors I met and uh, I have actually through all mass media communicated to people that equity is not a risk-free asset. So I think some people who think equity is a risk-free asset and have seen that there is risk, they are likely to choose debt. So I think that will be a change and that could reduce a uh, part of it. The whole concept of financialization of savings continues in the same way. I think uh, the ease with which uh, I think once an investor gets into the mutual fund system, thanks to all the digital models of investing and the easy ways through which you can invest today through a, by every asset management company, I think uh, clearly financialization of savings is bound to happen. And uh, that financialization of savings means that we will keep collecting money. Uh, what uh, we as a house have been trying to do is we have to collect a little bit more money in debt mm -hmm. as well and that's what we've been trying to do, particularly credit funds, etc. And that's what we are working on. Okay. Well, Naren, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by. That's the word coming in from S. Naren. But for the markets, the recovery is actually quite weak. We are seeing a lot of uh, heavyweight stocks under pressure today. TCS, HDFC, HUL, HDFC Bank, Infosys are all in trading in the red and the Nifty has also come off. Sudarshan Zukhani, Mitesh Thakkar and Sandeep Vagle are back with us. Uh, Sudarshan, as you were rightly pointing out, this market recovery has uh, gotten pulled <coughs> into and it's looking rather feeble now. Um, what's the sense you're getting about the rest of the trading day and how to approach it? Well, the sense is that the markets may make a, an attempt towards 10,600. And while anything is possible, I don't think that's going to succeed. So the trade is if the markets come close to 10,600, an intraday short position is justified with a 30-point stop loss. That's the trade 
uh, let the market see if the rally is possible and that's a shorting opportunity. I do not think today is a buy day. Oh, all right. And that would hold even for the Nifty Bank? That would apply for the Nifty Bank. Another 60 to 70 points of a rally in the Nifty Bank makes it a short sell for a quick intraday trade. Okay, that would take it closer to 26,000 uh, 26, plus. Uh, Mitesh, uh, you already said that you will short at 26,200 on the Nifty Bank. Uh, any fresh call on Nifty or Nifty Bank? Yeah, so Lata, I think we've, you know, uh, uh, while we didn't get 10,650 on the Nifty, I think we have taken mild short position, so not the, the complete set, I think, you know, but very clearly looking at, uh, to add on in case we get a bounce back when the Europe opens in the afternoon. Uh, suggesting people to you know look at shorting 10,800 call options or 10,750 call options. I think that could be a good trade to be in. And once we have slightly stronger recovery, I think possibly around 10,650 shorting the future is something which we would possibly look into. Uh, for the time being, the stock trades are I have a buy on a show clearing, a conditional buy if it breaks 132. Buy with the stock at 128 for targets close to 141 and one sell. Kadila is a sell with a stop at 406 for targets of 375. Okay, and Sandeep Vagdi is also here with us. Sandeep, what are you looking at? Good morning, Sonia. I would go with a buy in oil stop loss of 357, target of 378, and a sell in a lupin stop loss of 797, target 765. Okay. Uh, Sudarshan, what stocks would you advise trading in? Well, uh, it's uh, surprisingly Ashok Leyland, or rather not so surprisingly, where a buying opportunity is arising. I think Mitesh has already identified yes. it. That's, uh, that's worth taking into on the long side. And LIC housing is a short sell. I sp we yes. discussed it earlier, but NBFCs are generally weak today. I don't think they're going to see any rally. So LIC housing and even Diwan housing, DHFL, could be considered as shorts. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, giving us your 10 a.m. advice. Uh, today, we are going to need you a lot more than normal days. Uh, uh, thank you very much for joining us now. We will take a break. We have a lot more of uh, corporate uh, analysis to do. And we will have more market experts as well joining us. Back in a jiffy.